Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week 11, another seven curious interesting things I saw last week. So let's crack on. Uh, first one is uh, quite literally TV ads uh, and this is um, TV uh, manufacturers squeezing in ads wherever they can. So um, if you've obviously had a PlayStation or an Xbox or even on the home page of certain TVs um, there are squares where ads can appear but as you see here on an LG screen uh, this is a, an ad that's popped up on the downloads page. So where else can ads appear on TVs? So what you're seeing here is a TV manufacturer augmenting ads onto the TV um, that are essentially not in a broadcast a broadcast stream. Um, now, obviously, if you were being a little bit devious, then you could say, well, a TV manufacturer could understand when the ads were playing in an ad break and put their own ads on top of the broadcast ads. Um, obviously, that's not what they're doing here, but uh, you know, one could see a dystopian future where that happened. Um, so delving a little bit uh, deeper into this, then uh, in this case, the LG ads, for instance, uh, were coming from a very specific IP uh, so that you could actually just fiddle with your router um, and block these ads, for instance. Uh, or you can go one step further and there use a Raspberry Pi, for instance, um, with a piece of uh, software uh, called Pi Hole that sits in between and essentially strips out all of the IP based ads. So it's only really the ads that are in stream that you'll actually see from that point. So there's a bit of an arms race going on with a consumers blocking ads on their TVs and also uh, TV manufacturers and broadcasters also fighting over screen real estate and advertising. So uh, there you go. Um, the Taiwanese president uh, has announced, uh, don't worry, it will rain by May, uh, which is a weird thing to do, but uh, it turns out they're facing um, one of their biggest droughts in 56 years, um, which kind of means that they are struggling for water for things like um, manufacturing. Um, I think most of their water, I think 70% goes towards uh, agriculture, 20% goes to manufacturing. So their sort of chip and technology production is going to actually um, uh, take a bit of a hit. So they're actually um, shipping in or uh, trucking in, busing in water uh, as we speak to, to keep it going. So this is to sort of keep up with the, the world's demand for technology, uh, which isn't going away. Um, so we're seeing some real effects on um, countries, industries, um, and you know real people having to, to ration water because of the world's demand for technology. So um, so yeah, that's kind of interesting. Caught my eye this week. Um, uh, Quop, uh, if you remember, this is from uh, 2008, uh, really sort of uh, was super famous about 2010. Um, I realize that some people watching this probably weren't even born then. Um, however, this was a really famous flash game and it's called Quop because uh, those were the keys you would use and they were just, I think, the thighs and the calves uh, were what you would actually um, um, trigger. So uh, you were <laughs> you were trying to be your own physics engine and it was super, super difficult. I think I managed something like 11 meters or something like that and that was my world record. However, this has been the target of some um, AI fiddling. Um, so for instance, um, the, um, the the researcher who was looking at this uh, trained it, uh, just say, look, it can be played. Uh, and then lots of people saying, well, why didn't you get the world record? Because um, a human did that. He went, okay, I'll, I'll redo it. Um, essentially just use a, a slightly different um, algorithm for it. Uh, so DDQN, if you're really interested. Um, and um, really it was all about just saying, what do you get the reward for? So before it was the reward was like how to run. Uh, so for instance, it was rewarding things like um, torso height and leg height and knee height and things like that, which taught it to run. Um, and then what it basically said is like, okay, now I need to optimize for forward uh, motion. So um, apparently it took, you know, um, and uh, a couple of minutes just of like pre-training and then the rest of it like 40 hours was self-learning so reinforcement learning um, and you see the results in, <laughs> in front of you so I'll put the link if you do want to go and play or just just google quop basically um, but 47.34 seconds is the record um, you know I can't I can't believe how how well this is doing because it is it is just stunningly difficult game but go and have a go yourself um yeah, so this is an uh, interesting thing. So I thought, um, I saw this about mid last year um, and it's it shut down and then it seems to be back up again. But what this was about was um, essentially customers 
deploying service bots against services to get better service. So if you, for instance, uh, took out um, or bought a flight or your travel insurance or any kind of service that you bought, um, then usually uh, you may be entitled to money back or cash back or all sorts of things or delays or whatever it is might cause some sort of um, um, cash back. Um, so what you can now do is you can then deploy your own bot against the service. So if um, you have a flight, you can for instance um, look at the delays to the flight or, or whatever and your bot will automatically claim for your, what your um, um, your compensation so um, this is kind of interesting for any business out there that has some sort of customer service or um, even sort of public facing so chat or agents for instance then um, you know, the, the customers are now just sort of going, well, we don't need to uh, spend my time, which is valuable, claiming these sorts of things. Um, I'm just going to do it automatically. So um, essentially, what is your um, what is your philosophy or what is your reply to bot on bot um, service interactions? Um, just kind of weird. Um, so this is where we're seeing the future of the customer going. They're weaponizing themselves against bad service, essentially. Um, this is uh, from the University of Tokyo, uh, and this is a painting bot. So we've seen seen a bunch of painting bots before and they can do some painting and you tell it what to paint and they'll you know they'll they'll do some sort of algorithm to make it look make it look painterly um, but this is a slightly different take on it so what this does is you give it a concept or an object so you might say for instance uh, duck and what it'll do is it'll look up uh, what a duck is as you can see on the screen right now um, it'll look up something and it will then use algorithms to um, to basically regenerate that item into a concept and it will then turn those into brush strokes and then use real uh, paint uh, and colors, all those sorts of things to actually generate it. So it's the first time we've really seen a, a painting bot that actually has some sort of sense of consideration of its brush strokes um, and therefore some sort of a recognition of what it's actually painting. So um, yeah, so if you're an artist, uh, <laughs> be fearful. Um, this was kind of it's a bit of a deep um, bit of a deep article, and it really is about multimodal neurons. Now, multimodal neurons, it's hard to say, um, came to fame a couple of years ago when there was this um, apparently there was a neuron that was discovered called the Halle Berry neuron. So, um, and these are kind of abstract neurons, or there at least it's it's the idea of abstraction in your your brain when you think about a concept. So, what you don't think of is all the things that make up Halle Berry. You just have this kind of cluster of neurons that represents Halle Berry. Um, and when you see Halle Berry, you, this cluster goes off in your head. Now it turns out these are the, these have been observed in artificial intelligence or machine learning um, 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 services. So you've got things like CLIP, which is a general purpose neural network um, that actually has been shown to have multimodal neurons, or at least the behavior of it. Now, what does that really mean? So what it really means is, um, for instance, <laughs> if you saw the word iPod, um, stuck on an apple, you, you, your brain would trigger an iPod. You would probably even think of an iPod and all the things about an iPod, even though it's just um, the word stuck on an apple. Um, and that's what they started to see happen in these things where you get an apple, um, which is fine, and you can see it's probably a Granny Smith, and then you would actually write the word iPod on it and you would fool it into these sort of ab absurd kind of predictions about what it would actually be. So um, two things is going on here really is you can fool these really, really smart neural nets just by kind of writing the word iPod on something. But also what that really is happening is it's showing these kind of really interesting clusters of concepts that are going on within these neural networks. Um, what that really means is you could probably get through um, sort of customs or something like that by writing this is not a gun on a gun um, or this is an apple and it's actually on a gun and it will just go, yeah, it's an apple. Apple. Um, so there's a pretty big flaw in uh, neural networks. Um, however, it's also pretty cool to read about uh, multimodal neurons, uh, even harder to say them. And finally, um, this clip uh, was doing the rounds and lots of people have uh, added uh, all sorts of things to it to make it even funnier or better, um, but it's stunning uh, in its own right. So uh, this is, if you're not aware, this is a drone shot, um, which has obviously, obviously been flown by a super expert flight, uh, drone uh, pilot um, and directed and all the, um, the actors 
and actresses in this are all obviously, you know, absolutely on cue as well. Um, it's brilliant. So this has caught the eye of, um, you know, movie directors and special effects. So uh, this is just, this is stunning, uh, basically. <laughs> so uh, it just makes me uh, a little bit weird even just watching it. So definitely have a look at it. Um, this is the future of uh, cine cinematography. So uh, I'd be very surprised if you wouldn't see this in the latest sort of, or the next Star Wars episode or something like that. So um, check it out, watch the whole thing, and also um, maybe go on to Twitter or Instagram and try and find the weirder versions of it as well. Um, with that, we are done. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week.